and brings in a number of uh, VMware executives. Pat Gelsinger is here as last year wearing a, a baseball shirt. Last year we captured Pat on the pitcher's mound. John Furry is actually talking to Pat right now, trying to drag him into the cube. Raj Dasgupta is here. He is the director of IT at Exostar, a NetApp customer. Raj, welcome to the cube. Welcome Thank you very much. Park. Very appreciate it. So uh, you just got here, right? I just got here. Just walked here from my hotel, actually. Yeah, Traffic's I pretty tough. The traffic was too jammed. I said, you know what? I'll just I'll <laughs> just walk over here. Right. But uh, what do you think of the venue? We, we it's fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. A once in a lifetime type. Yeah, kind of this event. is a fantastic uh, facility. The the ballpark here is great. Have you ever seen a game at AT&T? I have right? not. I've seen. Uh, I'm from Virginia, so we've you know Washington Nationals, Baltimore Orioles. We never really have a team that wins, so we try to, you know, switch back and forth well, every year. Well, I'm older than you. I remember when the Orioles used <laughs> to win. But, uh, so anyway, tell us a little bit about uh, uh, Exostar okay. and uh, what's going on there. So Exostar is a SaaS provider of uh, solutions in the cloud for aerospace and defense and also for uh, life sciences. So our focus is things like identity management, uh, collaboration, secure collaboration, and uh, supply chain solutions in the cloud. Okay, so you got pretty, some pretty intense uh, security and privacy requirements going on over there. But tell, tell me a little bit about the history of, of, the, of the company and its, and its offering. So uh, Exostar was founded back in 2000, the kind of the dot-com heyday. And uh, the idea was that you'd bring the biggest aerospace and defense uh, companies together and they'd form this big exchange, this business to business exchange where billions of dollars uh, would flow through the systems. And you know, finally after you know, 10, 12 years, we've kind of realized that vision. You hit critical mass. We hit critical <laughs> mass. So now we're kind of looking at other verticals like life sciences, uh, you know, big, uh, you know, drug, uh, drug type companies. And so, you know, it's been uh, a fun ride for us uh, in terms of, you know, working with, uh, you know, our vendors to deliver these solutions in the cloud. Well, we've seen this in a number of industries. I mean, you obviously got Amazon's the big gorilla in the cloud business, but, you know, there's, there's, John always calls it a race to zero. It's an infrastructure play, but we've seen, you know, exchanges, uh, uh, industries gather together, multiple customers coming together within an, within an industry and the key there is, and I, I wonder if this is what, what's going on with Exostar, is you start to get birds of a feather, you get best practice, you get data, there's certain analytics that go, and, and, and you now start to get this flywheel effect, this critical mass. I wonder if you could talk about that specifically in, in the defense sector, and then maybe we could talk a little bit more about life sciences. Right, so uh, for us, uh, there's uh, definitely economies of scale. Uh, so, you know, companies like Boeing, Lockheed Martin, uh, Raytheon, uh, Rolls-Royce, BAE, these are the biggest aerospace and defense companies. So there's definitely economies of scale in terms of uh, understanding their best practices, uh, deploying their uh, you know, best practice in our solutions. And what we've done over time is basically get to a, a point now that you know, we, we're, we're kind of seeing the exponential 30, 40, 50 percent year over year growth in terms of our technology footprint. And we want to basically go with the best of breed to you know, scale as we grow. And they want to they want to be with a with a company with a provider that understands their business. So that's you know an advantage for you. But at the same time, they I'm sure they ask you, well, I want to make sure my competitors aren't seeing my data. So talk about that conversation, the data governance conversation, and what you're seeing there. So uh, with uh, aerospace and defense, you know, there's a lot of um, concern about security, securing the data. Uh, we are able to host these solutions in kind of a multi-tenant environment while still maintaining the security. And NetApp is a great partner for us in doing that. Uh, we can segregate data, make sure we have the demarcation uh, between one customer's data and another, all while keeping it secure, keeping it encrypted, and you know, uh, being able to scale as we continue to grow. We were talking to Dan Kimko, a pre previous guest, and we were talking about the whole Prism thing and 
the Snowden uh, debacle and so forth. And what he was saying is it's created a, a, an increased awareness within his customer base of that whole security. Now, you're serving a very security conscious crowd. So they, you know, maybe there's been no change in your business, but, but presumably in the life sciences business, you might see this. What are your expectations as a result of sort of the new discourse that's going on right now in the country? So I mean, there's a lot of concerns about, you know, healthcare, patient data, those types of things. Uh, so what we've tried to do is kind of take some of the tenets that we've used in aerospace and defense and use those uh, in, our, in our life sciences vertical and those solutions. So, you know, things like identifying, you know, if someone is really who they say they are, you know, for companies like uh, Boeing and Lockheed Martin, they have thousands of suppliers, thousands, um, you know, of, of e anywhere from mom and pop shops up to huge suppliers that they deal with. And so we basically secure that uh, network using digital uh, credentials, using one-time password type tokens. So, you know, that's kind of our focus, adding that s security overlay over all of our solutions. So describe your infrastructure a little bit. Um, actually, John. You got a question, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I mean, well, as usual, I'm dominating the discussion here, so. Uh, you look like such a star right now. I didn't even yeah, notice you were there, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so uh, windy. <laughs> I could sneak out and get a chance to talk to Pat Gelsinger and Ragu from VMware. Um, great presentation. Pat Gelsinger, again, with a NetApp shirt on. Uh, really good form by uh, VMware guys. I tell you, they are they are obviously very committed to NetApp. It shows they're walking the talk, Dave. I gotta say, just put that, that, that update in. Um, what I want to know is, is that, you know, we talked to a lot of the vendors selling stuff, and at the end of the day, people are building solutions, but we we would like to know, and, and the audience would like to know, what are the biggest inhibitors right now to full adoption of right. cloud? Uh, is it security? Is it fear? All of the above? What's your take on yeah, it? Yeah, you know, I think it's mostly fear, uh, and mostly, you know, kind of lack of industry standards for that secure um, overlay, that secure bubble in the cloud um, for mission critical. So we see the kind of the, the non-sensitive type um, services going to the cloud very easily, the, the non-core um, services. But in terms of those top tier, I, it's going to be a slow progression, you know, because, uh, you know, IT managers are not going to want to risk their business by putting their you know, critical data in the cloud and then having an incident and, you know, putting themselves at risk. They're used to, Dave, remember the old vaporware days? You know, someone would announce a product and, you know, ship some beta code. You just can't, you can't afford that kind of uh, mistake. Not that people are doing that, but that's a fear. Cloud is this potential risk. Yep. Just the potential scares people. That's what we're seeing. The reality is the economics are just insane. So what's your take on the, some of the economics, not the, like the number numbers, but like order of magnitudes of simplicity and, and uh, ease, of, ease of use? Right, so for us, um, you know, we, we've heavily uh, uh, invested in the FlexPod solution, and what we were doing before is taking a mishmash of different products and, and technologies, and you know, thinking we were smarter than the vendors, and uh, you know, using, you know, and what happened was our TCO was terrible. I had, you know, six or seven engineers ha had to be involved in every single deployment, and you know, it was, you know, borderline ridiculous. And so, fast forward two years, now you have integrated solutions like FlexPod with. Uh, with NetApp and Cisco and VMware in a tightly integrated solution. And that allows us to cut you know, the time uh, of deployment from you know, weeks and months to literally you know, 15, you know, 15, 20 days for a full solution from design all the way to implementation. Yeah, it's interesting we said, thinking we were smarter than the vendors. That, was a, that had to be a, 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 a cultural shift, a mindset shift, but you guys are in the business. So you've realized early on, hey, you know what, we could probably do some things better. Right. So how did you how did you shift those resources? What, where so, did you shift them? Yeah, so the, you know, um, Marie, our, our, um, uh, our NetApp contact, one of the things I tell her is that, you know, as an I, kind of an IT, uh, uh, you know, technology manager, you, you, you know, you're very, you're, the three dirty words are I don't know. If an engineer comes to you, there's a big issue with your, you know, with your solution, and you ask them what's going on, and, you know, they say, I don't know, you know, that's pretty much a death knell for you. So, you know, for us, you know, having these tightly integrated solutions gives you telemetry, gives you kind of a dashboard, a single pane of glass, so that, you know, w I I that you, you, you don't have that issue anymore. The other thing, too, the other, other comment you hear is, oh, we don't do it that way. That's right. a classic killer phrase, right? right. Oh, no, no, we, we don't do it that way. That's right. not the way it's done. Right, um, and those people fall behind, definitely. All right, let's take, a, let's take a, let's, let's a pause for a second here, and let's just reflect on where we are right now. Sure. Share with the audience where we are right now. Where are we? Where are we? So we're kind of, you know, I think we're kind of in, you know, the, the, the second inning here, you know, the first inning, 
Um, no, was actually, right outside the infield. No, we're, yeah. short, we're short infield, yeah. outside of second base here yeah. at AT&T Park. Paint the picture of the folks out there. What's going on around here at the park? Right, so uh, here, I mean, this is just, you know, more than I can imagine. It's like, you know, a party on steroids. You know, you're, you, you know I, this is a, my first, uh, you know, uh, time to, to VMworld and to, uh, you know, to a NetApp event like this. So it definitely, you know, it, it's hard to talk to you guys because I'm distracted by everything that's <laughs> no, going <me> on. <laughs> so we are live here in San Francisco at AT&T Park, home of the San Francisco Giants. We're actually outside of the infield, right outside, short, outside second base, short outfield between short and third, I'm with Dave Vellante. This is the Cube. It's a special presentation with the tech athletes, and it's a party going on all around us. So we got we got guys doing the 40-yard dash. <laughs> right? We got people seeing how high they can jump. We got the San Francisco 49ers cheerleaders over here. Food, drink, people. People hitting golf balls, people hitting baseballs, yeah. throwing baseballs, seeing how fast they can throw. Olympic soccer uh, <laughs> star signing autographs. We had uh, pro athletes. This is an amazing event, and, and NetApp is really laying it all out for their customers. So, Juan, let's talk about NetApp since we have the NetApp on the mind. What, what about NetApp it got, gets you excited uh, about FlexPod and the solutions? Uh, NetApp is, uh, you know, from our perspective, one of the um, leading storage vendors, leading you know, the best of breed, and we had a lot of good customer references uh, before we even went down that route, you know, who had uh, gone with NetApp and had, you know, great success in terms of, you know, managing, you know, the, the quagmire that storage, you know, sometimes becomes in, you know, in cloud type companies. So. For us, it was kind of a no-brainer because we were already looking at VMware, we were already looking at uh, Cisco, and so you know that that tight integration for us, you know, really was a no-brainer that we could basically use this as kind of a Lego, a building block to scale for the future. Dave, what's your take as an analyst? You see all the players. What is NetApp doing right now? What are they? What are they doing? And I want you to break it down in a baseball analogy. What are they knocking out of the park? What are singles? What are doubles? You know, how are they? Are they playing small ball? Are they going to hit the hit slugging percentage? What's your take? Well, I think uh, I have to think about the baseball analogy, but I guess they're they're in, in a way, you know, a, a, a specialist in that they're focused really on the storage. NetApp's the last, you know, large independent storage company. I mean, there are a lot of independent storage companies, but, but NetApp's the last public independent storage company. I don't consider EMC one anymore. EMC's got their hands in so many different things. They're this, you know, federation, they own VMware, et cetera. So NetApp is exclusively focused on, on storage. Um, so I guess in baseball terms, they're like the best shortstop in the league. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> and they do that better than anybody. They're Jeter. Yeah, but they're more, you know, they're, their right. customers are very technical. One thing about NetApp is, you know, they do have technical customers. They're pretty savvy. They have a good savvy customer base. So, you know, make them more of a running, running team, uh, Small ball, maybe compared to like a monster. Well, the other interesting thing about NetApp is they've they've changed over the years, right? They've transformed themselves. A lot of companies have, but especially NetApp. I mean, they really started out selling into the sort of workstation market, yep. right? I mean, you saw this, and then they 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 hit the enterprise, and then they bet the the farm on on virtualization yep. and cloud. Now they're you know betting the company on on clustered on tap. So they've made these big bets that they 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 talk about a lot and. They've been a survivor. Okay, we gotta get we gotta get the, the break here. Raj, final word. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Welcome to the Cube. This is the kind yeah, of the thing real, we yeah, get at the great. Cube. We got people cheering for us. We got the NetApp <laughs> tech athletes. We're gonna break in this segment. What is the big thing about just? We'll end on a note here. What's the big thing about NetApp? What should people know about what you've learned and enjoy with NetApp? Uh, for us, it basically is you know knowing where your data is. Uh, having a dependable infrastructure, and you know, just being in a place where you know and can predict how your uh, environment, how your storage is going to scale in the future. All right, this is live. Come on in, girls. Hey, show what we got here. We got this is what we're all about here. Center yeah, camera. We're talking now. Guys, come on in here. This is Dave Vellante. This is the Cube. This is a NetApp customer. Doing? What do you? Big happy customer. This is this is the cube. <laughs> this is where we extract the signal from the noise. This is our special presentation live at AT and T Park, outside on the outfield. This is a special edition of the cube, live in San Francisco. How about a cheer for the NetApp customer? <laughs> yeah. All right. Go. This is the cube. We'll be right back with Thomas Stanley, um, SVP of Global Sales and Alliance, right after this short break.